check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. And here you can also see that all the various NPCs within range, and if it was a physically accurate recast, and his field of view probably only goes from minus. Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, a professional indie game developer, and this is an interesting video where I will react and analyze a game trailer. I will talk about how things work behind the scenes and how you could build them in your own games. In this case, we're looking at the Watch Dogs gameplay trailer that was shown at E3 in 2013. Alright, so let's hit play. Mile. Be on alert. Hey, still recording and we're in Okay, so it starts off with the player controlling the camera. So here it's in a state where the input controls only affect the camera, so the player can look around but he cannot move. Then as you saw, it smoothly transitions back into the normal camera following the player. So over here he's controlling the camera and just like this smoothly interpolates into the down. So when using Sin Machine, this is actually very easy to do. You just position both of your cameras, so for example there's one here controlling this nice camera, and there's the one here controlling the car. So you place these two virtual cameras, and then through Scene Machine, all you need to do is set this one as active. And as soon as you do, it will automatically interpolate all the values between the both of them. So just like this, yep, very easy to do, and it's a very good looking effect. You can place virtual cameras all over your game and smoothly interpolate between them. Then here, as you can see, we have this nice little element showing a phone call. And you can see that this actually lives inside of the world, so as the camera rotates, the element also moves around. So for example, this is something that you could build by building a canvas and positioning it in the world and using UI elements to build up all of this. Or you could build this whole thing using normal game objects and sprite renders. Now since the objects themselves in here are positioned in 3D, so you can see that this square behind it is slightly behind it. So as they move you can see that there's a bit of a parallax effect. Remain hold on and main track. Once I lose them I'll come for you. Alright, quick baby. Alright, so as UI comes up, the first thing that we see is over here the minima. It is showcasing a simplified version of the world, so there's a bunch of symbols to identify each object in the world, and the minimap is also set up in 3D. I covered how to do a minimap like this in a previous video. Now the main difference in here is that the edges in here are faded rather than being solid. So you could easily apply this fade effect with either a mask or a shader effect. Another difference from what I covered in that video is that this one is actually in 3D. So you can see as he moves that the helicopter is an actual object. So that really just means swapping the camera from orthographic to perspective and all of the elements from simple sprites into some basic meshes. And in here we see an interactable element show up. So essentially as the player is driving, the mouse is locked into the center of the screen and then it just checks for interactable elements nearby that mouse position. Now the way that it does that is for example using a box cast starting from the camera position so it does a box cast and then locates all of the objects within this area, it finds out whichever ones are interactable, it finds this one, and it applies a simple highlight and showcases the UI element. Then for the visual outline, you can do that with a simple shader for null effect. And here as the camera rotates, you can see it in action with this NPC. So over here, that NPC is not visible yet within the interactable range. So once again, it's probably doing some sort of box cast. And as he rotates more, you can see that the icon starts showing up above the NPC. So this is probably doing two box casts, one that is much larger in order to show the UI element, and one that is smaller where the object or the NPC is actually interactable. So as the camera rotates, once it gets within a certain position, yep, there you go, now he's interactable. Now here you can see that the officers are in search mode, so one way you could do that is to store the last position where they saw the player, then you just tell them to go to a random position within a certain radius of that last position. And then here we see the helicopter spotlight looking around, it's doing pretty much the same thing. So you just have the helicopter up there, probably moving a bit left and right, and then he's just randomly pointing the spotlight into various positions. So this can be done by having an actual spotlight object, and then on the ground you would have some sort of target game object, and then just write a simple script for the spotlight to always look at that target. Then you simply move that target around and the spotlight automatically looks for it. Okay, then here the player finally gets spotted, and for the alert element here it's actually very simple but it looks great. 
So you can build this by just having three UI images set to filmed. Then you increase the fill amount as the timer increases and do some simple math to figure out how much fill each image should have. So you increase them over time whilst the player is in direct view of the helicopter and it looks like a pretty good element. Then when the player goes way too far, you can see that the helicopter loses the alert status. And now in here, the helicopter is still up there, still searching for the player. But as he searches, naturally, he also does a raycast. So as the player goes underneath this tunnel, you can see that the helicopter will try to locate the player and the rays simply collide with this overpass. So when the player goes into the tunnel, the raycast fails and the helicopter cannot find him. Now here the player goes into a hidden area and then shuts off his car. So this puts him in a hidden state that does something like reduce the detection radius. It's possible they also add the ability to lower the detection radius even further when behind transparent objects like this fence. So as a cop rolls by, here the cop car AI is probably doing a recast directly towards the player and normally it probably checks if the distance is under a certain value and if so then he is detected. And then in here, the fact that the car is offline probably acts as a negative multiplier on the detection radius, and the same thing for the fence here. So let's say the fence gives it minus 10 points on the detection range, and the car being off also minus 10 points. So apply all modifiers and then do some simple math to figure out if the player is detectable or not. So in this case, the cop car goes by and yep, he's not detected. Yes, squad, Suspect Now over here, he finally interacts with an object. Now, for example, this could use a system like I covered in the four ways of opening doors. In there, I used an interface that all of the interactable objects must implement. So then you simply do a box cast or a sphere cast to locate all of the I interactable objects within range of the player. And if so, then it shows up the UI element. So in terms of coding, the player doesn't actually know what he's interacting with. All he knows is that he's interacting with something that implements the I interactable interface. So that's a great way of writing some clean code and making sure that your player can interact with a variety of objects. And for the actual interaction could be just a simple function call and the object would simply increase a float by time dot onto time as long as the player is holding that button. Then for the visual it works pretty much the same way as the alert so increase on each side. Suspect's gone. Let's get and then after it is completely filmed then the action enables and in this case opens the door. Now here this news report comes on just as soon as the player enters. So in this case, it's just very simply, you have a box collider in here set to trigger. And whenever the player enters this area, you simply trigger this event. Now for the video, you can use the video player component to play any video and display it on a simple quad. So this is how all of the TVs and billboards work. So the video starts playing and then this guy in here starts becoming suspicious. Once again, there's the suspicion meter increasing. It's using pretty much exactly the same logic as the cops timer. So he transitions from suspicious state onto alert and he starts calling 911 and the player goes after him and can interrupt that call. And here you can also see that all of the various NPCs within range, they react to the player's action. So once again, it's probably just doing a simple sphere cast around the player and locating all of the objects that can react to the player's actions. And then depending on the player action, you can make them react differently. So in this case, the player simply destroyed the NPC's phone so all of these people aren't actually going to do anything other than stare, but you can see how this system is exactly the same thing that applies to all other actions. So for example, if the player had shot this NPC instead, then the sphere cast would probably be much wider and probably these ones would also react to the player's action. And if it was shooting, then they would probably start running away and calling the police. Now here we see the cameras in action again. So once again, something that's very easy to do with Sin Machine. So the player in here has a virtual camera and as soon as he interacts, he activates the second virtual camera and it smoothly interpolates between both of them. And whilst they are in transition, there's also a very nice shader effect. You can do this by adding a render feature and apply an override to all of the materials. So you apply this effect to all of the materials and as soon as the camera reaches its target position, then you go back into the normal state. Then here he simply bounces from camera to camera. So I thought this mechanic was really interesting. So again, what he's doing here is doing once again a raycast to make sure that the interactable object is within the field of view. And then it does a second direct raycast to ensure that the actual camera isn't occluded by any object. Forget the toys, we gotta get you out. 
Now here we see a really interesting mechanic where the player has to distract the guards and let the NPC go safely. So in order to do that, the player interacts with this object, which causes a sound. So once again, it does a sort of sphere cast. It locates all of the objects within a radius that can actually listen to sound. Then if the guard is actually within range, then he hears the sound and he moves on to investigate. So for the interaction here, it's pretty much the same as we saw previously for the door. So the guard knows that when he listens to a sound, he moves in to investigate and he moves to the sound position, so right here. And for the NPC movement, it looks to be automatic. So he's probably constantly checking around doing a cast on this area, and he stays idle if the guard is in there, and as soon as the guard steps out of that area, then he finally does his animation and moves away. Go. Someone's gotta be doing that. Tell me you guys see. Grab some men, we can't let this guy get away. Stuck. Don't move until I say. Now on the outside, instead of being automatic, the player actually manually guides the NPC. You can see how the move interaction is dependent on where the player is looking at. So in this case, it does a raycast towards the mouse position, then checks if it hits onto any object, and if so, then it calculates an actual valid move position. So in this case, it appears to be simply on the base of the object. So you just do a raycast, find this point, then set the y equals 0, and you get this point down here. Then simply position the UI element right on top of that position. Move ahead. And once the player tells, the NPC goes there. straight in there. And here with this special object, the assumption is that the enemies would spot him if the object is in this state. So that is probably handled straight through code, so the actual box ladder is probably just a basic one. And while it's in this state, then the object would probably behave pretty much like a fence. So you would likely apply some sort of negative modifier onto the detection speed, but he would still be detected. It probably works like that rather than being an actual, physically accurate raycast, since that would lead to a lot of player confusion. So for example, the NPC could be all the way in here. And if it was a physically accurate raycast, then maybe you could actually locate the NPC through here. So that would probably cause a lot of player confusion, so that's why this one is probably either solid or not solid. And as it changes state, then it probably goes into Move fully ahead. solid, so as soon as he moves in, yep, that guy now will not find yeah. it. Now here the player is going to use the sound system again. So as the object starts to make noise, once again it does a sort of sphere cast, and then finds that this guy is within range, so it calls some sort of noise function, and then the AI simply points him to look in that direction. Now the first thing that the enemy does is obviously rotate to face the sound origin, and then for detecting the player, they use some sort of field of view value. So the enemy is pointing in that direction, and they're accumulating the vector towards the player position, then simply calculates the angle, so in this case the player is at like 180 degrees, and his field of view probably only goes from minus 45 to plus 45 on this side. So just a simple math calculation to figure out if the enemy is within the field of view, and if not, then he's not detected. So in this case, the player simply approaches and takes down the enemy's sound bar. Let's go. Jesus. Hey, there he is! All right, you're good. Go. I owe you, Amy. All units, this is squad. We have a possible sighting on Aiden Pierce. Now over here, it enters a really interesting boat where it's looking for another player. So this is a really cool feature. Essentially, a player on a tablet or a phone could play along in a different way. So after some quick matchmaking, it finds another player. The other player, as you can see, has a different UI. And in this case, he can take an action to take down the helicopter and help the player. And over here, he can lift up some blockers in order to keep the player safe. So, yep, it's a really cool feature. I wonder how many people actually use it. Then over here, the player is finally caught, but the cops don't shoot right away. So for that, they could just store a simple bullion if the player was seen using deadly force. So if it were true, they would simply shoot to kill, and if it's false, any attempt to approach him and arrest the player instead. And for the player action, here it probably has just a very simple timer. So if the player stops for long enough, then it goes into the surrender animation, and then the special skills show up. So here it's a very nice radar menu. I covered something similar in the Apex Legends pink video. So you just keep track of the mouse delta and select the appropriate skill. Then he selects the blackout action, which shuts down all the lights on the buildings and everything. 
Now here the buildings don't actually have some real actual lights. Doing that you would have thousands of all of these lights so that would be way too expensive. So instead what they do have are simply emissive textures. So for the visual for the blackout, all you do is simply disable the emission or set all of those emissive textures to black and everything goes from bright to nice and dark. All right, we got him. Then for the effects there's all of these sparks happening right here. So once again probably just doing a sphere cast around the player. Looks for all the objects nearby that have some sort of electrical component and just spawn some particle effects right on top. Then he takes out the first guard and goes into a slow motion effect. So the easiest way to do this is simply to modify the time dot time scale. So if you set it to 1 then it runs at normal speed. If you set it at point 0.1 then it runs at 10% of the speed. So if you set it to a small amount then everything that depends on delta time will be slowed down. Then the cops also change their material to the same as the highlight effect we saw previously, so just a simple Fresnel shader effect. And at the same time it's showing the non-critical spots that the player can shoot at, so just some game objects positioned at the knees. Now if the player shoots near that position then the game keeps track of that and knows that the player went the non-lethal route. I believe the game has some sort of honor system which is where the lethal or non-lethal comes in. So he takes on both the cops, then he gets on a boat and drives away. And as he does, then you can see the blackout come to an end, so the buildings once again turn on their mission, all the lights come on, and everything goes back to normal. Positive confirmation on the Alright, so that's it. This was a very different video from my normal ones. It was really interesting to take a look at a game trailer and try to identify all the various elements and how you could possibly recreate them. I hope you found this video interesting and useful and learned something along the way. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this. Feel free to leave suggestions on what other trailers I should react to. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Post any questions I have in the comments and I'll see you next time.